Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopists. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about the use of AIC or BIC as a guide to picking the number of parameters in a model. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, let me explain that in a minute. So when you're trying to fit something to your model, and let me take an example from the previous couple of uh, tutorials I talked about, you know. So when you have a bunch of data, uh, you know, that's scattered around and you're trying to cluster this, you know, whether you're using Gaussian mixture model or k-means, how do you know how many clusters you need to divide this into? Yeah, so if you divide this into two clusters, maybe one is right here and the other cluster is right here. If you try to do this into three, maybe one is right here, the other one is right there, and the other one is right here. So uh, you get the point, yeah? So how many clusters do we uh, do we need to divide this into? Well, you can look at the histogram, actually, if you have the luxury of looking at histogram, or if you have the data, you know, uh, just plot, plot it. Uh, you know, uh, reshape it into one dimension, plot it, and then if it looks somewhat like this, for example, okay, if your data looks like this, how do you, uh, I mean, it gives you an indication, right? So this is like one, maybe two, three, and four. So maybe this, uh, you need to divide this into four different regions. And if you use Gaussian mixture model, you know how it's going to fit it, right? I mean, it's a bunch of Gaussians, and maybe in this case, four Gaussians, you fit this. Now, you can fit the same data with uh, even more Gaussians. What if uh, you fit this with uh, multiple? You see a small bump right there. Oh, sorry, let me change the color so it's easier. So maybe one peak right here. Another right here. There seems to flatten a little bit. If I read too much into it, I can put one more right here. Maybe one right around here, one right here, another one here, another one here, and maybe one little one right there. So you can put like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you can really uh, fit like 10 of this. And this is called overfitting, yeah? So you don't want to, I mean, it may look good actually. If you actually uh, use, 10 different Gaussians and fit it with your, uh, fit those to your data, to your, it, it may look like an excellent fit, but this is overfitting. What is the true uh, location? So it's very easy if you're actually working with images. Well, let's open an image and see, uh, for example, if you have something like this. Well, it looks like there are two regions that we can separate, right? One is the cell boundaries and the other one is inside the, the pixels inside the cell itself. Uh, if you have an image like this, uh, this is uh, uh, an alloy and you can see there are two different regions and there is a bunch of noise uh, going along. So in both examples, our number of clusters or number of regions is uh, two. Now, what if you have an image somewhat like this, then visually you can look at this and say, okay, the darkest region is one, although I can say that this region is darker than the darker, you know, this one right around here. But for now, let's say, okay, that's one. This is two, uh, and this is three, and four is the brightest. And this vein right there can be like five. And I can also see that this region that looks very dark can be six. There can be anywhere from four to six, right? I don't know which one is correct. Again, we have this issue just by looking at this. Not every data is an image, right? I mean, in this case, because we have image data, it's a bit easy for us to say, okay, split this into four or split this into six. So how can we uh, uh, identify or what guides can we use to automatically separate them or to get an estimate of how many clusters? So for that, we use AIC or BIC, okay? So AIC is a... I see again Google search to learn more about it. This is Akaiki information criteria and BIC is Bayesian information criteria. Okay, and this can be very helpful to pick the right number of parameters. And they both estimate the quality of a model using penalty terms for number of parameters, okay? So all they do is basically they think of uh, on y-axis you have some penalty term, right? So you have like some sort of a penalty and on x-axis you have a number of parameters. Let's say in our case, number of clusters. It goes from one, two, three, and so on. 
as you increase this, of course, the penalty is very high if you have very low, and then meaning it, the fit is not great, okay? And then as you keep adding, it, it goes down and down and down, and at some point, it's like asymptotic. So maybe three is the best number, yeah? I usually pick uh, somewhere around the elbow. In real life, it's not continuous, right? I mean, you change it from one, two, three. So this is like one, a two, three, well, one, a two, a three, and so on. So it's not... I'm horrible at drawing, but you get the point. So pick somewhat, uh, something right around there. Now, uh, it, basically, the, the, in summary, AIC and BIC, they provide optimal value for the number of parameters if we don't know that. Okay. Now, all it's doing is, basically, if you think that, okay, this is K, like number of parameters is K, uh, AIC is nothing but 2 times K, okay, minus... Uh, I believe there is a term two times natural logarithm of uh, the residual sum of squares or sum of residual squares, if you want to call that. Okay. So this is looks at the residuals, squares it, sums it, and then this is the equation for that. Okay. In Python, it's just uh, you can just do dot uh, uh, bic, and then uh, you know it's 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 pretty easy implementation. But I hope you understand exactly what AIC and BIC mean at a high level and then how we use it uh, in picking the right parameters. Okay, now let's uh, jump into Spider and uh, modify our code to use BIC or AIC and then uh, let's actually plot them. So let me open my Spider interface IDE here and this is the code from last time actually. Okay, so where we uh, loaded an image, alloyed or JPEG, and then we reshaped the image into minus one and three. Let me go ahead and run this so you can see exactly uh, what the output looks like. And let's look at Variable Explorer. So uh, the image is reshaped, and uh, because the original image was 487 by 695, and it's reshaped to 487 times 695 comma three here, okay? And then we imported uh, Gaussian mixture from scikit-learn and defined a model, which is nothing but GMM and defined the number of components as four. But four is not the right number of components, right? So if I open that image of, uh, what do we call it? Segmented alloy. Let me go ahead and import that image and you can see how it looks like. Uh, this is supposed to be a binary image. Let me change the brightness and contrast to zero to four because we have, and you see that's not a great segmentation. Yeah, because we are segmenting it into multiple regions. It should be only two. So now if I actually go and change the number of components to two and run this one more time, and let's kill this image so I can open the next one. Okay, so now let's open this image again, uh, the new image that got generated. Segmented alloy, let me go open, open it, and there you go. Let me adjust the brightness and contrast, set zero to two. Okay, and this is an amazing uh, segmentation, okay? And you see the original image is right here. So this is the original image and this is the segmented image. It's a pretty good uh, segmentation. So how do we know that? Again, uh, we have two components. Two components is the right one. So uh, instead of uh, uh, doing all of this, let me remove that. And well, actually let's remove this labels part. And now let's modify the code to actually uh, change the number of components from one all the way through 10. Okay, let's go from one component to 10 components and see how the BIC or AIC looks like. So for that, let's uh, go ahead and uh, uh, define number of components. Instead of defining it inside here, I'm gonna just uh, define a range. Okay, the range is going from one through 10, let's say. Okay, so it changes 10 times in here. So now that I've defined this, let's uh, uh, iterate it inside this uh, GMM model, okay? Let's uh, change this to models because we have more than one and let's iterate this in here. So let me put my square brackets up there and GMM and instead of number of components, it's gotta be N, okay? 
and uh, let's uh, uh, cycle through n in a second, okay? n and my covariance, I'm going to leave it to uh, tide, fit image 2. That's good. Everything looks good there. For n in n underscore components, okay? So all it's doing is changing n from 1 through 10 and then running this. That's pretty much it. So once it's done, let's go ahead and plot it. So from... Mat, did we do that here? No. Let's uh, from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. Okay. Normally, I define this, import this library right, uh, you know, on the top. It's one of the key libraries, plt dot plot, and what are we plotting? Number of components on x-axis. Let's do number of components, and uh, let's plot that against. Uh, BIC, but then we need to iterate through different BIC. So the way we can, the easiest way we can do is let's define M and uh, BIC of image two, right? Our input data is image two. That's our raw data. Calculate the BIC uh, image two for M in GMM. What did we call it? Models. I think that should do, right? And uh, BIC, okay, and let's label this. We don't need to, I mean, let's label this as BIC so we know exactly what we are plotting. I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and plot it, and uh, if you want, you can label the x axis, okay, so to make it x label, and let's call this n underscore components. That should do. I'm not plotting AIC to plot AIC. It's again, you copy this line and change this BIC to AIC. That's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and run this. It may take a little while because it's going to iterate through 10, this through this 10 times. So let's run it. Okay, so, uh, so obviously I seem to have uh, uh, mistyped here, you know, instead of L-A-B-E-L, -E uh, that's what this, this error is up there. But let's not worry about that. The plot is good, so let's actually have a look at this plot. So as you can see, for n equals to 1, it's a, the, the penalty term is pretty high. But for n equals to 2, it completely drops down, and then it's almost asymptotic, like I mentioned in this uh, uh, right there. You know, it's, it's not... Uh, so let's get back. So n equals to two seems to be good, and after that, again, it's uh, uh, it seems to be you know for n equals to seven again it goes down a little bit, but pick the first one right there n equals to two. This is usually the right one. Okay, so that is uh, how you can use AIC or BIC or a combination. We could have actually plotted both on one, but sometimes the scale is so different uh, uh, you miss the point. So that's why I did only one here. So uh, if you don't know how many components or how many parameters uh, you need to change, you can always look at this penalty term and uh, and and use that as a guide. You know, uh, and I hope uh, I hope this really you find this helpful. And you can use this technique not just for Gaussian mixture models, but any other model. Anytime you're modeling anything. If you wonder about how changing certain parameters actually affects the model itself, this is a great way of actually getting some information beforehand so, so you take informed decision in terms of defining your parameters. So thank you very much for your attention. And if you like these videos, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.